Olivier Vernon's current situation is very interesting as far as it goes with the Browns. He was once looked at as the finishing piece to put alongside Miles Garrett on this defensive line. He was a former pro bowler whose biggest criticisms at the time was his cap number and his ability to stay healthy. And you would think when one of those major things get addressed, most people would be happy, right? But an extremely underwhelming 2019 campaign has everybody questioning the value of Olivier Vernon. And since he does have a new deal, I want to look at that new deal and what that new deal means for the Browns. The Browns and Olivier Vernon have recently agreed to a restructuring of the last year of his contract. Now, Olivier Vernon was set to have a $15.25 million non-guaranteed salary this year. Now he will get a $11 million guaranteed salary and a $7 million signing bonus. That includes a 3.75 base salary, some workout bonuses, and then $2 million available incentives. So if he does play very well, he can get close to what he signed for at the beginning. As for now, it would be mostly guaranteed instead of entirely non-guaranteed um, until the start of the season. Now, why did this happen? Well, there's two reasons that this happened for Vernon. This is a smart move. He was never going to get that $15.25 million non-guaranteed money this season. So restructuring was his only way to get, I think, double-digit money out of this season. I think if he would have got released and hit the free agency market, he might have got 7 or $8 million from somebody else um, for a single year. So it makes a ton of sense. And he has the security not only in his ability to make the team but in his financial stability because now that 11 million dollars is going to be counted as dead cap so the browns have no incentive to get rid of him instead of before when that 15.25 million was not going to count against the cap so the browns would have saved 15 million dollars if they cut him now if they cut him they would only waste 11 million dollars so it's not likely that he gets cut for the browns it seems that this is kind of a compromise right they didn't have much luck bringing in a direct upgrade at that position. None of the guys were available they can obtain. So they instead settled for Olivier Vernon with a lesser cap hit. That allowed them to save some cap immediately and retain their ability to be extremely flexible with the position next year because it's still only a one-year deal. And a hidden bonus to this restructurement might be that it might make it easier to trade Vernon and maybe throw him into... Um, an Ngakwe trade along with David Njoku that's possible but it's very unlikely now this seems like it has some benefits for both sides but honestly this has a lot of consequences for the Browns so let's look at some of those consequences The Browns have made it no secret during this offseason that they have been willing to spend big money to obtain the services of Jadavion Clowney. And Jadavion Clowney has somewhat made it known that he's kind of indifferent about signing anywhere at this point. Now it's going to be interesting to see what happens with his whole situation because one of his largest and most willing bidders in the Cleveland Browns kind of caught his bluff with giving Olivier Vernon this guaranteed. It completely takes them out of the Clowney signings, both privately and publicly, which is going to affect the amount of money that he's going to be offered because there's one less bidder in the room. And not only is there one less bidder, the biggest bidder just left the room. While I understand Clowney's strategy on wanting to sign late, I wonder if this is going to backfire on him because I don't know how many teams are going to be willing to play this game until August to get him signed. So this might actually affect Clowney to the point to where the Browns might still be able to swoop in and get Clowney on a cheaper one-year deal because he just played this situation out too long. It's possible but it's not, again, it's possible, but it's not likely. Another thing that's possible, but unlikely is Ngakwe, who is in a similarly dead situation when it comes to the Browns obtaining his services. Because at this point, unless the restructuring of Vernon's deal was part of an elaborate trade to get rid of Njoku and him in order to get Ngakwe, 
then I, I just don't see it. And I don't see it from the Jacksonville Jaguars perspective on why they would even make a deal like that. Maybe for David and Joku because he does have some prospects in the future, but why trade Ngakwe for somebody who you're still going to have to pay $11 million when you don't even want to pay Ngakwe in the first place? Why trade Ngakwe for a deal that's not going to offer you a ton of future assets? Now, at this point, it might just be what Jacksonville is able to get, but still, I don't get why they would trade for a older player in a package that includes Ngakwe when they're a team that's so clearly trying to build for the future. So as far as starters go or anything that's going to shake up the starting lineup on the defensive line, I think all those options are kind of out the window and we're set here. It's going to be Clowney. It's it's going to be Garrett. It's going to be Olivier Vernon. It's going to be Sheldon Richardson. And it's going to be a combination of Billings and Larry Ogunjobi on the defensive line. Now, do I think that's enough? No, I don't think and have the faith in Olivier Vernon to play at the level to make that enough. I think they still need to add some pieces to that defensive line on the inside. Um, and I think it's still relying a lot on Miles Garrett to be Superman, which can work, but again, is not a preferred situation to be in. But there are other consequences to this signing as well. Now, I get that there are a lot of Browns fans that wanted this to happen. Clay Matthews and Everson Griffin. Clay Matthews because there's a lot of nostalgia involved in it. I understand that one. And a lot of people just feel like he should have been a Brown his entire career. And they wanted to bring him in. And he's available. And he doesn't seem like he's going to be that expensive. And there's somewhat of a need there in defensive end. Even though Matthews plays more of a 3-4 edge rusher, he is capable of putting his hand down. And being a DN, although that's not the best fit for him. And an Efferson Griffin makes sense because you just hired a guy who has an extensive history in Minnesota, knows this guy very well. And again, you have a need at defensive end, and he would be a lot cheaper than keeping Vernon or signing Jadavion Clowney. But I would still argue on the other side of that 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 never that none of these guys ever had a great chance of signing with the Browns in the first place. To me, it never made much sense to pay either of those veterans to bring in behind Garrett and Vernon, especially since they've already paid Adrian Claiborne. Let's be honest here. Adrian Claiborne fills that role that you would ask Clay Matthews or Everson Griffin to fill if you would bring them into this roster with Olivier Vernon. And then on top of that, you got Chad Thomas, who's young, who still has some promise, at least as a backup defensive end there's just not a great need there to fill up the edge rush positions with a ton of veterans that aren't really going to be able to play that much the only way this would make sense is that the browns really want to save money and not pay any of olivier vernon's 15.25 million and then sign somebody one of these guys for maybe five or six million dollars and save that money there immediately but since they've already restructured olivier vernon at 11 million dollars it seems like they're set at that position and with the death pieces around it. And also, since they're set with Vernon, it makes the competition for Matthews and Griffin, not Vernon, but Adrian Claiborne. And if you look at it, Adrian Claiborne is just a better fit in a 4-3 than Clay Matthews. And for Griffin, and for the comparison between Griffin and Claiborne, Claiborne is just a more reliable and more dependable option. Griffin has had some issues staying on the field in the last few seasons. To me, it doesn't make sense to sign one of these veterans and make an investment against an investment that you just invested in, in my opinion. Now, those are the on-the-field consequences, but does this make sense for the reason that they did it? Now, I'll be the first to admit signing Olivier Vernon to a $11 million cap hit is still not a great deal by any stretch of the imagination, especially if you look at it in a vacuum. Outside of that vacuum, it does give the Browns some much needed flexibility. Look at the young names on this roster, right? Odell, Jarvis, Baker Mayfield, Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb. Denzel Ward, Miles Garrett, maybe Mac Wilson, maybe Greedy Williams, maybe down the line Grant Delpit. It's amazing that you have this amount of players, some of those players who have already been paid, and yet the Browns have the most cap space 
in the NFL. It's a it's a roster building feat, and I think some credit should be given to John Dorsey and a combination of Andrew Barry because he did put some of this roster together. That that is able to happen. They signed Jack Conklin. They were able to draft Jedrick Wills. They made some additions. They got Austin Hooper, and yet they are still still one of the best cap situations in the NFL. And if you look at the team that's second, Washington you can see how much better of a situation you are than most teams that have the most cap space available. Now, why is the cap space important? Because I do agree that sometimes we fixate on cap space when it doesn't matter with how the team's going to be built or how the team's going to perform. Sometimes we just worry about other people's money way too much. But in this situation, it actually does matter because the Browns are in a situation where they're going to have to give out a big money deal to Miles Garrett in a couple years, hopefully a big money deal to Baker Mayfield, um, hopefully a decent money deal to Nick Chubb, and probably another big money deal to Denzel Ward. That's four major contracts that you would hope to come up if they play to their expense level and in order to keep that core of four players while also keeping Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham happy while also being able to maintain the offensive line that you tried to build this offseason you're going to need a ton of flexibility when it comes to the cap and since the Browns have the most cap space in the NFL they have that flexibility in order to manage this situation without handcuffing themselves too dramatically for a team like the Browns that has the roster that they have and the young players that are still in the rookie deals that they have they're going to come up relatively soon the biggest asset you can gain at this point is flexibility and now the browns have that in spades so is this restructuring a good value on the surface if you just look at the contract itself it's a terrible value but if you look at some of the things it does do for the browns cap situation and some of the flexibility it adds it does make it a more livable situation so there are undoubtedly a ton of pros and cons to the whole Vernon restructure. On one hand, it kills your ability to pay a direct upgrade and still makes you gamble on committing 11 guaranteed million dollars to a guy who played 10 games and had 3.5 sacks in 2019 while he's also turning 30. But on the other hand, if you're the Browns, you get to have some stability in a chaotic offseason, especially to your defensive line. And you add some cap flexibility that might come in handy when retaining guys like Miles Garrett, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if it's true that Clowney was never going to be an option for Cleveland and a guy like Ngakwe was never going to be available for a reasonable price, then this was honestly the next best option. So hope that you can get Olivier Vernon for cheaper. So this is what they did. Sure, options like Clay Matthews and Everson Griffin are cheaper and might make sense to some. But in my opinion, I think they add more question marks on a defensive line that really can't afford to have any more question marks added to it. But that's my thoughts on Olivier Vernon being restructured. It's kind of surprising that it's gotten to this point. I thought at the end of 2019, he'd be one of the first people gone. But he's found a way to hang on and make a decent chunk of change while also not making so much money that he raises eyebrows but let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below do you think vernon should have got restructured or do you think they should have continued to push for Clowney and ngakwe or do you think they should have cut him and went with the option like clay matthews and efferson griffin let me know what you think the browns should have done in the comment section down below but again guys Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ding that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload. And again, guys, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Have a good night.